So this question is set up like a simplify question. Again, simplify questions are typically between one and three lines long and contain either an expression or an equation. In this case, we have an equa equation. And the strategy is as it sounds, right? Anytime we have that scenario, short question with an equation or expression, the very first thing I wanna do is simplify what I have. So I'm gonna rewrite this five parentheses x plus one equals five x plus five. And I'm going to simplify this by distributing the five across the first set of parentheses. That gives me five x plus five equals five x plus five. And what do I know, right? So first of all, uh, this is a true statement, right? Five x plus five does equal five x plus five. That is always the case. If I were to attempt to you know, combine like terms, I'd find out that I'd be left with zero equals zero, which is also a true statement. So let's see what the question is asking for. How many solutions does the equation have? Well, it actually has infinitely many, okay? So what we have to keep in mind is zero equals zero here does not mean it has no solutions. It literally means that any x value I plug in here and here, will make the statement true, right? Because zero will always equal zero. It doesn't matter uh, what the x values are. There are infinitely many x values that make this statement true. It definitely cannot be exactly one value or exactly two values coming from what we see here. And if you'd like, you could always test this out. If you weren't certain, you say, well, hey, what if I said x were equal to three? What would happen? I'd have five parentheses, parentheses three plus one, which makes that four equals five times three plus five. And we'd see that both sides give me 20. And then again, that would make zero cross out as an answer. We can then also plug in, let's say X equals two. So what happens when X equals two? I'd have five times X plus one, which is two plus one, making that three equals five times two plus five. And we see that both of those give me 15, which is also a true statement, meaning that it cannot be exactly one, right? And you get where I'm going with this because I could just go ahead and try x equals four, and that would give me five times five equals five times four plus five. And in both cases, I'd have 25, which confirms that it's not exactly two either, right? Because we have now tried three different numbers and all three of them worked. So if you did not understand that zero equals zero means infinitely many, this question is also a great option for plug in your own number, right? So plug in your own number as in, if I plug something in for X and it works, then zero cannot be correct. If I do it again and it works again, right, another X value, then exactly one cannot be correct. If I do it again, then exactly two cannot be correct, leaving me with infinitely many as my only option.